In this video, I'm going to show you where to find gold in the most unlikely of places. I'm going to talk geology and show you some historic places along the way. All that and a whole lot more coming up. Wow, just look at the geology around here. Isn't this perfect for gold deposition? Now we're up in the San Francisco mountains. And if you know anything about these mountains, you know that what? Oatman and you got Gold Road which is right to the south of us. They produced a lot of gold. Ooh, and some of it free mail too. Anyway, this is associated with the Black Mountains. You can look it up on any map. And the interesting thing about this geology is there's a lot of volcanic activity that was going on. You can tell just by looking. See that mountain behind me? I know it don't look very spectacular. You see that black band running through it? Some people would think that's a sill. Remember you got dikes and you got sills. That's not a sill because it didn't form inside the earth. It's part of a lava flow. And you could tell because the bottom section has been cooked, not the top section. On top of that is what? Rhyolite. It's a light colored volcanic rock. It's an igneous rock and felsic in nature. Remember there's three different types of igneous rock. Felsic, intermediate, mafic, and then of course you got ultramafic, and we'll talk about that later. You have all these volcanic necks. This entire ridge is nothing but lava flows, and then as you get over to Oatman over there, you just see these beautiful formations. All those were part of dikes and volcanic necks, or plugs as they call them. They came up, and then of course the outer cone was a lot softer. Most of it's going to be ash flow and it eroded away and it left these beautiful formations behind. That's why they're all rough and, and gnarly and jagged looking. And a lot of them are kind of a, a beige white color while other ones like this ugly one here is dark. That's more of a mafic basaltic neck. Now I want you to take a look in the background. You see that boy? What do you got? You got two plugs over there. They're, they're dacite which is in the rhyolite family and you see a lot of hematite at the base. You're going to find a lot of gold out here in the volcanic ranges that are associated with rhyolite. Now don't get me wrong, you're going to have gold associated with mafic rock too, but it's going to be a different deposition model. But for the most part, we found more gold when it's associated with rhyolite than when it's associated with basalt. So I'm going to show you some stuff around here, but first I want to show you some rocks up close and personal because you're hearing all these words and you're thinking, Jeff, Every word you say has ite on the end of it. How am I supposed to remember that stuff? Well, come here, boy. I'm going to show you. All right, we're going to go over some rocks real quick. The geology out here says it's what? Mostly all igneous, which is a no-brainer. But what type of igneous rocks? Well, I'm going to show you. The majority of igneous rocks are going to be granitic in nature, which is like this monker right here. You can see it's got large crystals growing in it, which are called phenocrysts. And then, of course, there's tons and tons of mica in there. Some people mistake that for gold. Now, of course, granite's made up of what? Mica, quartz, feldspar. You should know that. And, of course, you can see little black spots in there called hornblende. Well, that's a typical type of granitic rock, and you're going to see a lot of that as your basement rock out here. All right, this is another one. This is andesite. It's an intermediate on your igneous list. Now, if you heard me in the gold fields before, you've heard the word andesite. You're going to hear it a lot, especially in your USGS reports. And this one is called trachyte or trachyte, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Now you're going to see this a lot, and especially over there in Oatman. And it's been altered. You're going to see this a lot in places like the Comstock, where this has been altered. All right, the next one you're going to see out here is rhyolite. You're going to see tons of it out here. And like I said, you find a lot of gold with rhyolite. Now, Rhyolite is in the granite family and it's an extrusive rock. It just means it came up to the surface really fast and it cooled and so the crystalline structure is very small. It's got a fine ground mass to it. It comes in all different colors, reds, yellows, whites, and pinks. Now what's associated with it is dacite and this is dacite. It's a white igneous rock and you're going to see tons of it out here. And Like I said, you can always tell by using a jeweler's loop. It's got a fine ground mass to it. And you can see small quartz crystals growing inside of it. Now in this area, you're going to have a lot of stringers. That's what they were looking for, which are little tiny thin bands of quartz that are running in the rock is where your gold's going to be out here, especially where you see a lot of hematite on the outside of it. That means a lot of mineralization. That's what the old timers were looking for. Is anything that had those deep reds or dark purples to them. Now, another rock you're going to see out here a lot 
are these green rocks. Now there's all different types of green rocks, so don't say one green rock is like another. It's called peridotite, and it's got a lot of olivine in it. And this is really good stuff when you start finding this up in these ranges here. Start digging around it, see if you can find any of this redder material, this dark red hematite material, or these stringers running around it. That's always a good sign too. And I'm gonna show you why here in a minute. Oh, now before we get going, I got one more I gotta show you. This little guy right here. Now if you get hungry and you're out in the wilderness, these make good eating. Just soak them in water for 10 minutes and pop them in your mouth. Ooh, they'll fill your belly up fast, boy. Look at this mocker. You know what that is, huh? You better, boy. That's a five stamp mill or a single battery. Anyway, it's right off the 68. You can't miss it. Right on the side of the road. Why is this important? Think about it, son. What did I tell you? The five top places to find gold. One of them was old mill sites. And this one's 20 feet from the highway. It don't get any easier than this. You can see where the mortar box sat right here. And then of course they had the cams up there. And the bull wheel was over here on the side. And then right here they had the steam engine sitting here. Chooka, 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 chooka. The power plant to run that darn thing. And if you look up above, you can see where the trestle is. That would feed the back to feed the mortar box. And then it would come down off of this. And you could see where they had tanks down here at one time. Check these old mill sites because a lot of the ore that they dumped into this thing is spilled off to the side and you want to collect it up and you want to check it out see if there's any gold now before you do that i highly recommend you check the land status make sure you're not on somebody's property i already checked this thing and it's on open blm land so anybody and their uncle can come over here and sample to their heart's delight and that's what we're going to do i'm going to get up there to that trestle where that old trestle used to be and do me some sampling boy you ready are you with me boy i said are you with me boy so come on let's go Look at that boy, samples. Ooh, and they got sulfur in there too, which means sulfides. A lot of this ore's got sulfides in it. You can tell when you break it open, give it a good smell. You'll smell that sulfur in there. Now, most of the time stamp mills, they only work for free mill. So I wanna see if there's free mill associated with these sulfides. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collect up as much of this stuff as I can and then we're going to take it back to the shop, run it through the little pilot mill, and then we're going to roast it, find out what kind of materials in there, if there's any free mill gold or not. And that'll tell me if this is going to be worth coming back to. And that's what you should be doing too when you see places like this. Go ahead and sample. Make sure the land is open first, it doesn't belong to somebody. And if there is gold there, you're sitting on a gold mine. They've done all the work for you. All right, now, I don't know the name of this mill because it's not on any map. So we're gonna call it the Union Pass Mill because we're right next to Union Pass on 68. Now, speaking of Union Pass, there's a small establishment on the other side, a homestead, if you will. And I'm gonna take you over there because I think it's important. If you're gonna come this far, you might as well head over to the other side and take a look at the homestead over there. It's a fantastic site. Anyway, we're gonna head on over there now. I'll show you what I got. Ooh, so you know what I'm gonna say, huh? Say it with me, boy, ready? So come on. Let's go! This. I bet you didn't know this was here, huh? 
This is the old Jonathan Draper Richardson homestead. It's right off the 68. You can see the 68 right up there. Wow. Look at that. It's still here. It's been here for like a hundred years. Now, if you're not familiar with this place, I'm gonna give you a background story on this so you can understand. All right, now the story has it that in 1897, Jonathan and his wife, Victoria, they were living in LA and they got tired of living in LA. They said, you know what, we wanna head out west. Well, they, they traveled 360 miles in a covered wagon in summertime to get out here. Can you believe that? And they found this spot where the Union soldiers used to have an encampment here to protect a lot of the settlers going over this mountain range because they were headed over to Colorado River and they were having Indian problems here. Well, they saw this place and they said, hey, this is a perfect place to live. It's got water, it's shaded, and it's, it's in a perfect area for a road right through here. So that's what they did. They built this homestead back in 1897. This, this whole place covers 160 acres and they've got a several wells on the property where they dug down and they actually were getting a lot of water. There's water everywhere here. You can tell by the vegetation. And so what they decided to do is, hey, you know, we get so many visitors rolling through here, going from Kingman to the Catherine Mine or over to, to the Colorado River. What we're going to do is we're going to start growing fruit trees and vegetables and things like that. And then that way when, when travelers come passing by, we can give them stuff to eat and give them something to drink and maybe if they want they can stay the night so they can rest up keep going wow look at how thick those walls are and it still has the number on the door frame now if you look at the old photographs you can see where they had a balcony here for that door up there and it come out here cover the top of this and then there would be stairs that came down right here it was fantastic and then they had a porch back here where people could sit around and, and eat go in the house and then this was built on later this is an old hotel that was built back in the 40s they had three kids with them when they came out three children and after their parents died um, the wife died first Victoria from cancer in 35 and then the husband later in 1940 well in 41 the children came back out here and they loved this place so much and people were still traveling through they built this this hotel right here it's actually a motel for travelers coming through you can see where they had the wiring up there they had power heat water and it was a really good looking from the old photographs it was really nice looking back in the day You can see the old tool shed in the very back there. Wow, look at this. This wasn't a tool shed. This was a chicken coop. You can see where they had an area set up for the chickens right there. All along inside. And look, see the, the chicken wire in here? So they could come out here and do what they do. And then that way they could have fresh eggs in the morning. That makes perfect sense. Ooh, fresh eggs is making me hungry. Ooh. Good place to stop to wet your whistle. More water pipes everywhere. And then down there where the campfires are, in this little spot where you see this retaining wall, they had another building right here too. But it looks like somebody carted it away or burned it down. This would have been a fantastic place to hang out after driving on the hot dusty road for hours at a time. I mean, right now it feels fantastic in here. You can see where people have been spending the night. Now, they were getting so many visitors passing by here and stopping because word had gotten out. They said, you know what? Why don't we build a gas station here too? That way people driving by, they can fuel up their vehicles. So that's what they did. They built a little gas station. Come here, look at it. Here's the gas station I was telling you about. Look at this. It was a two pumper. They had a pump here, pump there. That was probably for water and air in the middle. And then the two posts that held over the awning right here. It's like somebody cut that one and pulled. I don't know why they pull it out of the ground. Man, they did. And this was a this was a good looking building. They built this in the 30s so people could drive them by. They can stop and they get the fruit, or they can get water. They can take a break and fuel up their car before they're heading out. 
Now, a lot of the people passing through here back in those days was headed over to the, to the Catherine mine. It was a very rich gold producer. I'll show you that here in a minute. But they would stop here and get fuel, maybe stay the night, and then move on, because there was nothing out here for miles, usually coming in from Kingman. And the fruit, they had fruit trees everywhere, vegetables growing everywhere, because there's a ton of water under here. There's a basement in there too, but I'm not going in there. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Before they got here, this used to be the camp encampment for the Union soldiers when they came through in 1851. That's why they call it Union Pass. And they camped out right here. And they actually found remnants of their clothing and buttons and all kinds of stuff laying around here. If you didn't know it was here, you'd drive right by it like everybody else does. Now, like I said, if you ever get a chance to come out here and visit, this is right off the old 68. You can't miss it. It's the road that connects Laughlin with Kingman. Ooh, and it's a neat place to come down and visit and get a taste of history. I'll throw up some old pictures so you can see what it looked like back in the day. It, it was fantastic. They did a great job. Wow, remember Union Pass. All right, we're going to head on out of here because I'm going to take you over to Catherine Mine because I think that's something you should see, boy. Ooh, so you know what I'm going to say. So come on. Let's go! can't get in there you see that authorized vehicles only areas closed dangerous mine working that's a 900 foot shaft over there and a lot of the collars collapsed in they had to put that big fence around it you see that and they had levels 100 200 300 foot. every hundred feet there was a level and they produced all the way up till 1940 I know there's tons of gold in there but it's all flooded out timbers are rotted I've heard stories about that thing it produced three million dollars worth of gold when it was twenty dollars an ounce all right well i'm sorry i can't get on in there because i don't want to mess with the man so i want to get on out of here i hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did smash that like button boy smash it hard break that button and don't forget to leave me a comment if you know more about this mine than i do let me know down in the comment section okay all right well i'm gonna get on out of here so until next time this is jeff williams and who you better know who boy saying you like these old locations we do too you sample in the places i've been telling you about you'll find yourself some au take care everybody Bye.